Hey Virgos, how y'all doing? Welcome. We're going to be taking a look at your first half of May, Jenna Reading here. So in your meditation, really fascinating, but isn't it always? Um, I saw the Virgo Collective wearing a dragonfly brooch that was like diamonds and sapphires and pearls and it was a really expensive, very fancy looking brooch. And then I was taken to, like, really smartly dressed. And then I was taken to, um, it sort of looked like an auction gallery on the Upper East Side of New York City. Where it was a lot of, you know, wealthy people rubbing elbows and, and bidding, you know, insanely large amounts of money on objects. And I saw this Virgo collective really smartly dressed wearing this, like, really impressive dragonfly brooch. And then I saw at some point, like, the Virgo collective, like, hobnobbing with people. It felt like an event, a fundraiser maybe. And then touching the, like, kind of putting their hand to the brooch and then being transported into a completely different place where they were almost in, like, an anti-realm where it was, like, wearing rags and it was all gray and they looked just a complete lack, like, almost like a prison of sorts where it was, like, no food, no water, wearing rags, cold, like, the complete opposite of the opulence, right? And it was weird. And then I saw them touch the brooch again and they get went back into the, the fanciness and there was this, and then I saw the, the dragonfly kind of be separate and I saw this huge dragonfly and it felt like there was this, when I think about dragonfly medicine that equates to the ace of swords, it has to do with dream time, but it also has to do with illusions and how things appear versus how they actually are. Is your inside matching up with your outside? That's what this feels like to me. Is your inside matching up with your outside? This could also be, you know, in terms of what you desire or want to manifest in the physical form. How are, how is your internal landscape? Because you're only going to manifest what's aligned with your internal landscape. If you look around your physical circumstances and you don't like what you see, check your insides. That's how it goes. So I, I feel like there's a, um, a discord between what's going on internally and how things appear to be on the surface. Are you going along to getting along or are you playing a certain role that, that doesn't necessarily feel authentic to you in some way? Something about that. Uh, I'm intrigued. Let's go ahead and see what your cards say. Hey Virgos, let's go ahead and see what your animal energy is for the first half of May. Animal energy, oh, indeedy, indeedy, indeedy. This is really, really interesting. So first of all, you have the gazelle here, which is nine of pentacles energy. And then on the bottom of the deck is the beaver, which is eight of pentacles energy. So let's talk about work and the coins. <laughs> um, you know, gazelles are really interesting animal medicine. Well, first of all, nine of pentacles, which is what this equates to in the tarot, is about the entrepreneur energy. It's, it's someone who, you know, loves what they do, believes in themselves, works for themselves, feels really good about the work that they alone achieve achieved, right? But gazelle medicine is very much about the flip side of fear. So on one hand, the gazelle, look at these big old ears, right? The biological imperative that allows it to hear danger from far off so that it can run the other way, right? And it has these two amazing horns here. Would they be antlers or horns? I don't know. I guess horns. Um, it has all of this strong speed and movement, right? But the flip side of gazelle is that it's about fear, right? You have this strong, beautiful animal that's always in a state of, of a bit of vigilance because it's not exactly at the top of the food chain. So it's got to be able to hear that lion. It's got to be able to hear that hyena. It's got to be able to hear, you know, the crocodile wherever and have that high discernment so that it can run away quickly, I, I feel like this has a lot to do with this sort of vigilance or this fear or what's going on in the inside of you. All right. Because it's interesting. Nine of Pentacles is like is like a bit of a baller, right? And that's what I saw at the beginning with the brooch and the fanciness. And then I saw that split screen where they're, you know, the opposite of that, right? On the inside or behind, you know, underneath the surface. So it's really interesting that Gazelle is coming up for you. Let's go ahead and get to the cards. I'm using, um, I, it's, I've had this deck forever, but I've never used it on the channel before, I don't think. Um, it's called the Akashic Tarot. So it's definitely a deeper dive, but let's get into it. I mean... 
Queen of Roses, interesting indeed. Now, the Queen of Roses is really fascinating in this context because look at the opulence, right? It's interesting that we're, we're seeing that. Now, the Queen of Roses is, is absolutely one of my favorite energies in this deck because she's all about that sweetness of life, those really emotionally profound relationships that we have, both with ourselves and others. But this is also about allowing yourself to derive a lot of joy from the present moment. It's quite literally allowing yourself to stop and smell the roses. So it's really interesting here. I always get a bit of a three of pentacles from this key as well, because this top here looks a lot like the three of pentacles to me in the traditional tarot deck, which is all about the work that you particularly are good at and how you go about doing it and leaving a lasting legacy, right? But I, what I'm getting around this, it's very Beltane. We're about to be in Beltane, so I like that it's seasonally appropriate. Um, but what I'm getting with this is there's a rose and there's a thorn. There's a rose and a thorn. And it's, it's kind of like duality, right? Is what I'm getting with this because it was like the opulence and then the poverty, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it could be someone who has it all, but it has like a lack thinking, right? It's something like that. Are you seeing the rose or the thorn? Are, are you a rose on the outside, but on the inside, it's all thorn? There's something about this. How things appear versus how they actually are. The, the top is something versus the bottom. There's something in that for you. I'm hearing the roses are your relationships. Two queens. Two queens. So Queen of Forces, this is Queen of Wands energy, right? This speaks about balance, right? Now, what's really interesting here, I just said the word duality. We're just talking about two things or a flip side of something, shadow and light. Then we have the sun and the moon and these two different landscapes. What is going on here, Virgo? What is going on? You know, this speaks about the balancing act that we all must undergo between our shadow and our light sides, right? So this is really, really interesting that we're talking about how things appear versus how they may seem like inside if you were to turn it inside out or flip it over in some way. This also speaks about how well are you balancing what you have going on, right? Interesting. I, I, I don't know if you can hear my little cat outside the door, but... That's what that is. <laughs> My little cat's crying. Let me in. I mean, I, okay, listen, y'all. Listen to me now, Virgo. Y'all's is the last reading of this round. And so I can say with complete confidence, I cannot tell you how many times this key has come out in this round. There's something in the collective energy that is going on around the light of the world. But this is really special for you. And here's why. Again, duality. We have someone on the outside and someone on the inside. We're talking about how things are on the inside versus how they appear on the outside. So we'll just keep walking down this lane. So here we have the hermit, which is uh, special for you because, of course, you guys are the hermit in the tarot, right? So we have this hermit with the lantern knocking on the door. We have this guy with his cat, a guy with his cat. And I just mentioned my cat. Oh, I love a good synchronicity in the morning. So we have this guy on the inside and what you can't see off camera is that he's over here working on some sort of unnamed masterpiece, right? But he's not willing to share it. He's not willing to bring it out into the light. This key is very much about how we often hide the best aspects of ourselves, our talents, our most vulnerable parts, the work that we do that feels more personal to us because of a fear of rejection or whatever many reasons that we keep ourselves small. But I feel like there's this a very definite energy around keeping yourself small or not being completely authentic with how you go about your reality. Are you like deeply, this is an example. Could someone be deeply unhappy on the inside but appear to be killing it on the outside? It's just an example of like how this, you know, duality works. Could someone be appearing to living their best life and, and making those coins and doing the things. But in reality, they have a greater destiny that they're they're not willing or, or wanting to step up to out of fear of change or out of fear of, you know, losing what they've already, you know, built up into this point. Uh, a safety net is an illusion. Safety net still has holes in it. Something about that. Anyway, Queen of Roses. Two for one, two for one, and we got two for one. Oh, my stars in the sky.
For the Queen of Roses, we have the Emperor and the Magician in the reverse. These are two major masculine energies in the reverse. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Well, I'm going to hold them upright for the purpose of the visual, you know. You know, the Magician is all about standing strong in your power and knowing that you have the power and ability to manifest the life that you desire. This is using and being aware of all of the tools at your disposal and knowing that your destiny, your fate, your life, your circumstances are up to no one but you. The emperor is about being in a position of authority. It's about the patriarchy. It's about being the boss. It's about being a provider, a caretaker, a father figure, right? This is really interesting because these are the two mega masculine energies and they're in the reverse. But the queen is in the upright. You know, masculine energy is a lot about forward action and movement and how things appear. Feminine energy, if you think about just the, I won't, you know, get into specifics, there's no need. But in terms of the anatomy, the male anatomy is, well, more visible. And the female anatomy is more internal, like in terms of the, you know, sexual organs, right? That's coming through here for some reason because we have the rose and then we have the thorn right we have both of those embodied then we have the queen with the two masculines in reverse so i want to talk about feminine energy you know feminine energy is really at its core about allowing ourselves to receive right there's something about that allowing ourselves to receive and allowing ourselves to you know, embody a certain energy of vulnerability as well. You know, Brene Brown, I always, I always think about her and Brene Brown says that, you know, real strength is vulnerability. There's something about kind of coming out of how things appear or breaking the mold and going like, hey, this is what it really is, or this is who I really am, or this is what I really want, or this is what I really have to say to you about XYZ ABC right? There's something about something inside of you that wants or needs to come out or be expressed in some way or just be acknowledged by you. Maybe not expressed, but just acknowledged by you. How might you be keeping yourself small or how is your circumstances creating an internal, see, creating an internal life that doesn't necessarily match up with your external um, sort of visuals framework appearances so to clarify the queen of forces we had the five of cups so this is all about perspective right this is about loss and mourning but this is about perspective are you seeing or focused on the capybara that's dead on the water banks or are you focused on the capybara that has made it out alive who is clearly the murderer you know escaping from the scene of the crime right where is your perspective the cups that are spilled or the cups that are still standing Again, duality, twos. We have the two cups, night and day with the two, the thorn and the rose, the two masculine figures here, the inside and the outside, the fear and the abundance and the agility. It's really, really interesting how this is coming forth. You know, going back to the dragonfly in terms of like illusion versus what is real, I keep seeing this sort of truth. I, I, I there wants to be a truth that, that wants to, there's a truth that wants to be acknowledged in some way, shape or form. Again, this could be something internal within you. That's like, yeah, I know I'm not taking as good care of myself as I should. And I need to ask for help or assistance around that. Or I am not getting my emotional needs met in this situation. And I need to like, think about that and look at that. Or, Hey, the work that I'm doing doesn't feel like it's, it's really feeding my soul. And I need to take a look at that, whatever this is, or my home situation, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's, I feel like there's an acknowledgement that wants to happen with that so that you can release some aspect of it and invite better times or, or better energy around it. Okay. There's something about that and water here, releasing something and inviting something else in. Okay. Light of the world. I mean, you have another queen, two queen of wands here, technically, because queen of forces is very similar to queen of wands, right? Queen of wands, the light of the world. Let's talk. Now, I want to point something out here. This lion, by the way, is the natural predator of the gazelle. So that's interesting. But also this lion, do you, can you see this? Do you see how her ribs are showing? And she definitely needs a snack. Remember how I saw like the poverty thing and the, it, it's interesting how this is coming forward. Anyway, Queen of Wands, traditionally speaking, is all about confidence. She is the polar opposite to this. 
because the reason he's keeping himself small and he doesn't want to come out, come out wherever you are is, is partly due to a lack of confidence that's based in fear. Fear of rejection, fear of reprisal, fear of disappointment, fear of being successful even. Do you have a fear of success? Whatever this is for you. But this, these are two complete and polar opposites. And I feel like you're being invited to choose. Do you want to choose to keep going the road that you're on and in your given circumstances? Or if something is out of accordance within you or you can feel that discord, whether it's a lack of balance or, or if thinking something and not saying it or feeling like you're just not where you're meant to be or whatever have you, you're being really asked to step into the seat of your confidence, come outside and really bring that into the light. Whether this is just for yourself, this doesn't have to be holding a press conference at the office talking about your internal world and how it doesn't feel like it's, you know, balanced. It doesn't have to, be, I mean, do you, if that feels right, it doesn't have to be that dramatic. This can be something that you realize and admit to and for yourself so that from that point, actual change can be inspired and occur. First, it's about admitting or, or really getting clear on what that is so that you can go from there, right? Again, the fact that this is nine of pentacles and it's fear, I do wonder if it has something to do with either your independence, um, uh, something about that and or the work that you do in terms of working for yourself or the joy that you derive from it or something to do with that, okay? You got this, Virgo. I just, I feel like it, we, we need a bit of a, a realignment, maybe even through a vacation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes vacations can be really, really good for that. Which oracle? I'm feeling this one. Okay. Let's get an oracle for Virgo. Let's do it. <sighs> wow. I mean, there's no surprise here. The Shadow Queen. Acquiring knowledge, insecurity, manipulation. Right. Acquiring knowledge, insecurity, manipulation. Do you see the lady holding the lantern and the man holding the lantern? And we're talking about masculine versus feminine. And we're talking about duality. This is really fascinating. Remember how we were talking about excuse me, incorporate, I can put the card up, incorporating your shadow side with your light side as well. And then we're having the shadow queen and then the light, right? What is in the shadows? What is obscured? What is hidden? What is in your subconscious? What is thought and not said? What is the subtext? What is going on that needs to be brought into the light? Because, and, and I feel like the key here also is the acquiring knowledge aspect of this, because that's why we do shadow work. It's ordered, it's in order to acquire knowledge, right? It's in order to have all of the information that's available to us so that we are, our subconscious is not negatively informing our choices, right? Because if your subconscious is negatively informing your choices, that means fear has a say in what choices that you're making. And that is not going to lead anywhere that's even remotely in the realm of your highest and best good. And it's certainly not going to lead you to any sense of happiness or fulfillment, right? So I feel like there's something to that. You know, insecurity, we talked about the seed of confidence with the queen of wands and how this was the opposite of the light of the world. And, and now I also want to bring out too, or point out too, that we have sunflowers here. Sunflowers here. You know, I always think of August um, when I think of sunflowers and because that's the time that they're really associated with is August. And what's interesting is that doesn't Virgo season begin late August? after what leo season and we had the lion why do i feel like it's a very poignant time for you but i feel like it's uh i'm hearing to look back at last august uh last virgo season i'm hearing to take a look at last virgo season or even the one before that but it's it's because she's looking to the past i'm hearing to look back there's something about uh last virgo season um or the last couple virgo seasons even there's something about that time frame that feels like a, a hint somehow to what could have caused or could be an active aspect of this um, something that feels like it's out of alignment or discord of some some sort. I feel like that's the clue and the hint. And we also have the sun here and there's this big point of duality. But I, I want to go back to this aspect of 
you know, we had the magician and the emperor in reverse. We had the queen of roses. This does not feel like a time where you are being advised to go after it, go get it, make these changes, do the most, like fix it, so to speak, right? This feels like you're being encouraged to be the queen, step into your feminine energy, right? And do you see how he's like, and, and then we have two cats here, which are also symbols of intuition and receiving. And then we're talking about acquiring knowledge, the shadow queen. You have how many queens? Let's count the queens. One, two, three, four. You have four queens here. I remember queens are about, about receiving. It's a feminine energy, right? Acquiring knowledge, insecurity, manipulation. I feel like you're really being asked to consider the darker parts of yourself and how your situation could be modified through just going inside and really taking a look at your internal landscape, why you've made the choices that you've made and how you can invite a greater sense of balance, harmony, joy, pleasure, abundance, and light into your experience. Right? I'm hearing alone time. I definitely am hearing alone time because the, again, back to that dragonfly and that sort of truth and like, What's the reality versus like, what's the illusion? It feels really, really important. I'm also hearing, you know, dream time has a lot to do with dragonfly energy. So I would say you can even set the intention for your dream times. I actually feel like there's been some nightmares going on, hasn't there? Nightmares or weird dreams or something to do with that. I'm hearing to kind of pay attention to that because there's, there's knowledge coming in within for you. You know, I'm really drawn back to these cats. If you think about cat and the fact that my cat was at the door, like it's a cat reading, right? There's something about cats where they just, and this is what makes them different from dogs, really. They do whatever the heck they want to do. <laughs> they don't give two shakes of anyone's tail what you want or what's going on. They do what they want to do, when they want to do, and they cannot be, they cannot be tamed. <laughs> That's if you have cats or have been around cats, you know of what I speak. And I feel like what's interesting with the nine lives of the cat and the nine being September, we're talking about August, September, there's something about that. It's also interesting too, that in terms of like, you're being asked to really, I feel like free yourself in some way by acquiring that knowledge and really looking at how your situation or your choices are keeping you small or not serving you or are allowing you to hide in plain sight. And I feel like that's what you're doing, especially back to that meditation. I feel like there's an aspect of you or something to do with you that is hiding in plain sight. Right? And I'm hearing that you can be more of a cat about it and really give yourself full permission to go there. Really look at your inner workings, consider your situation, and really take a healthy and honest diagnostic of what is working, what is not. And again, how you can invite a greater sense of balance and pleasure into your life. Again, I feel like this is related to how you see things and your perspective. Is it balanced or is it askew? Let's take a finer look at that. And how might fear be driving you in some way, shape or form, whether it's fear of success, fear of failure, fear of being seen, whatever it is, fear of not having enough with that lack mentality. But I do feel like there are aspects of your shadow energy or your fear that are affecting you and I do feel like while you may be somewhat conscious of it a good deal of it is subconscious and that's where we got to be very careful because if we don't have all the information that is available to us then we're not in complete facility with the magician in reverse and for reverse we don't we aren't in complete control I'll even say um over what we're doing right? If our fear is making our choices for us, right? Now I'm going to say one last thing, and this is no shade to this generation, but it's what coming, it's what's coming through. And I say this with complete love. Um, the baby boomer generation is a really good example. And I'm not saying that everyone in this generation fits into what I'm about to say, but the baby boomer gener generation is a really good example of a time when a lot of people within that generation uh, were ruled by fear, subconscious fear. Now think about who the baby boomers were raised by. A lot of them were raised by people who survived the depression. So they inherited that lack mindset 
of like, did anyone have grandparents that like squirreled away money in weird places and always thought like, you know, never waste even like a kernel of corn, right? Because it may be gone someday. That's a lack mentality. It is. It's it's not being clever. It's a lack mentality. So the boomers kind of acquired that, took that in. And then as a result, you know, a lot of the boomers kind of went forward with this sort of sense of like, you've, you've got to work yourself to death and then, you know, just be happy that you're able to like provide and like support yourself and like having a good job is all there is. And it, you know, the, it's not about following your bliss or joy. No one cares about your sole purpose. It's really about providing for yourself and your family. And it's, it's all of this kind of like script, right? So, and again, I'm not saying that's every baby boomer. I'm saying that it's a product of that generation, which was in turn a product of the previous generation. So there's something in that as well. And I feel like there's a whiff of this in this when I say as an example, that even if boomers aren't a part of your given experience, there's an aspect of this that says like some of this is ingrained deep within the surface and you are being asked to go deep, go within and acquire that knowledge so that you have access to all that knowledge available to you, which puts you in a position of magician in the upright and the emperor in the upright of power and authority so that you're not operating from a place of subconscious fear or your subconscious at all. You're in complete awareness. But in order to get that complete awareness, you've got to go inward. Okay? All right, Virgo, this was a deep read, but <laughs> you absolutely got this. This is the important work and it's going to serve to, you know, align you and put you back in a position of greater authority and power. Okay. We're feeling good about where you are from an intrinsic, internal and deep level as you deserve. Right. So with that being said, I'm sending you so many blessings for your first half of May. I really hope that this helped and resonated. If so, please do let me know in the comments below because I absolutely love reading through your comments, Virgos. And with that being said, just thank you. Thank you so, so much for being here. And as always, and most of all, thank you for being you and be well until next time.